If you want to learn the real way to scale a sustainable Amazon online arbitrage business in 2023, you're going to enjoy this podcast. My friend Presley helps me out with some of my content strategy, kind of from an outside looking in on the Amazon space and myself discuss what it looks like to grow on Amazon in 2023, some key points you want to do if you want to you know, really make it easier for yourself and everything like that. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. All right, we're live. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, if you guys don't know Jacob, he'll be working with us this summer. Shout out Jacob. He went to Best Buy right before this and got the extra cable that we needed for the pod. Shout out Jacob. Um, he's the best, but he's ours, so respectfully. Uh, Miles, you're in my apartment now. We yes, got this sir. little student set up right here. And today I really want to dive deep into the current state of online business and what you guys, you Amazon boys, are feeling during the summer. I know Wi Fi has talked a lot about it. All my Amazon friends, Get loaded up with Celsius, and it's gonna be a great summer. So, current state of Amazon, current state of money, Twitter, more specifically. I know a few people that are watching that know what that is will understand. Um, yeah. yeah, basically just talk shit. It's kind of funny because Danny totally started like the Celsius wave on Twitter. I never had one, and I will never have one. But Garrett and Danny, my two buddies, I do the Buy Box Bandits with. They've been loving that basically, and so everyone kind of caught on on like the Amazon side of Twitter and everything. But in terms of like what's going on for the summer, so it's back to school season for Amazon mm. basically. So that tends to be the coming out party for people um, who start like in the in the winter or after like in the new year, right? A lot of people start selling stuff in the new year and in the spring and back to school is the first time they really see demand go crazy on certain items, right? Like backpacks, shoes, crayons, a lot of stuff like that start popping off. So like every year back to school is like the coming out party for people. It was for me in 2021. It was my first time doing hundred grand a month in revenue. And then like last year, Billy and Jimmy and, and uh, Andrew, and Michaela, a lot of my friends were able to really take off with back to school as well. So that's like, what we're feeling essentially is that'll start in like mid July. Like there's a lot of people watching this. I've been getting the question like daily in my DMs, like when you start worrying about products for back to school and it's like in mid July is when that stuff starts popping off. So we got to make sure everyone's paying a lot for backpacks this year on, <laughs> on Amazon. Oh, we got to like control oh, we gotta, the we supply. We got to post that video still. The one we filmed as a skit. You got to yeah. post that one on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we had this little skit that we filmed last time we were shooting where um, I'm just like sitting down and Miles like takes my backpack. I'm like, yo, dude, like give it back. And he's like, dude, I'm trying to flip it on Amazon for a profit. And um, I was kind of like curious about that. So when you say back to school products, like we're talking like colored pencils, backpacks, like if you're an Amazon, Amazon seller and you're looking to like find that one product that's just gonna like blow, blow everyone away during the uh, back to school season, like what's the one you're focused on? Or yeah. top three at least, like what yeah. are the most lucrative things to go so after? So what's nice is like, and for anyone watching, like, you know, you might not be familiar with Presley, basically where we work together for video editing for a lot of my content and uh, and such basically, because I think we're posting this on mine, right? Mm -hmm. Cool, okay, fire, fire, yeah. So like, it's interesting, you don't know a ton about Amazon. So like the viewers, you're gonna learn some of the stuff as, as we go and everything. But yeah, like backpacks, shoes, crayons, anything that people would buy going back to school, a lot of clothing as well, really pops off to get incredibly tactical for those of you guys watching this who are looking to make money selling on Amazon. What you should do is like, July 20th, August 1st, August 15th is when st stuff really starts popping off. A lot of stuff goes up in demand and goes up in, or yeah, up in demand, down in sales rank, up in price. So what you should be doing is running Keepa product finder searches for stuff that's gone up in price. Um, basically, if you don't know what that is, you should learn. There's YouTube videos um, on and everything, but you can get a tailored list of all the products that are sh shooting up in price, shooting up in demand, shooting down in, uh, in sales rank to be able to make a bag base. So like, that's how I really got started and really, like, really clicked with things two years ago. And back to school was the first time I'd seen crazy volume you're to do like 15 grand in profit in a month and then kept that momentum rolling ever since basically um, with that stuff. So it really gave me a chance to find a new plateau and uh, reimagine the way I think about stuff. And then I got to see like making money pretty quick. Like, you know, you sell 200 of one thing in a day. It's like, this shit really works, you know? And so like, that's what I was running into two years ago based on I really started to figure everything out. Okay, so back to school, you said back to school clothes. Any particular brands? Like I know, I don't know if you want to like gatekeep that because I no, remember when I was going like back to school. General stuff, yeah. Like what people like. Because what's interesting with Amazon, man, is like it's not a question of like whether a brand's good. You gotta whether people like a brand, but it's also can you sell it, mm. right? So like all Nike, Adidas, Converse stuff, everything like that. The nice part is that um, everyone watching this, you know, you're probably reverse sourcing stuff. You can just look at what other people sell basically and get a good sense of it from there. Like just with like seller app and everything. 
Interesting. So like back to school products, if you're at like a, I know like wall, you walk into like a Walgreens or something, right? And, um, or like a CVS, I know they always have like the back to school section. Okay. Is it ever possible to find profitable items at like a Walgreens or do you have to go to like really outlet shopping or Amazon? Like if you pulled up to a Walgreens and you go to back to school stuff, are those things already being sold as a markup or is there still like potential for profit on Amazon? Dude, so what's interesting is so like I've mainly sold, sold shoes and clothing like the whole time I've been doing Amazon stuff basically and I challenged myself last night with my coaching program basically. I was like, we're gonna look for beauty products tonight. We actually found some stuff that was profitable on Walgreens basically and like that's the nice part. It's like, on Amazon, like everything sells really well. It's just what you can locate properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense to kind of go with what you know and that I had a shoe reselling background. So like that's what always came naturally. I really like basketball so I can look at someone's shoes and have a general idea of whether or not they're gonna be pretty popular. And that served me really well getting into like outlets and reselling and stuff. But yeah, I know we're gonna go fuck up that TJ Maxx later for some retail arbitrage, but I definitely prefer online because it scales way better like walgreens.com, nike.com, adidas.com, stuff like that basically. So I'm always curious to ask Amazon sellers about that because it's a very popular topic in the community about like the idea of platform risk and mm-hmm. that with Amazon, right, you know, one policy change could change the entire business of Amazon FBA overnight. And so do you ever stress to people that are joining your coaching programs or anyone that's looking to get involved with the space that, hey, maybe you shouldn't quit your nine to five or maybe you shouldn't like leave school until you kind of have like a... a a good like base of cash flow coming in or you know a lot of money saved up from this to actually like go all in so to speak because of I guess the risk so to speak of the platform yeah so I mean everyone's situation's different in regards to that but like overall the way I see it is you know I consider myself like an entrepreneur like a business person I'm not an Amazon person mm-hmm. right I think a lot of Amazon people get way too tied to Amazon stuff because they don't expose themselves to other business models right like there's a lot of people that do Amazon that have no idea what money Twitter is or anything like that. But those Amazon people that are on money Twitter, I'm getting exposed to learning about you with the agency business, like the client ascension guys. So I'm getting to see, and I know for a fact that online business works, period. I know I could translate and go start an agency and make 10K a month with that within 60 days. I'm 100% sure, right? But I built myself to gain that confidence, right? You know, if you've never done successfully with any business, you don't have that self-reliance and everything yet. So it's different. The way I see it, right, is that like I don't consider myself an uh, an Amazon person. I consider myself like an online business person. And that comes from like, you know, being exposed, having homies that are doing different things and everything like that, which is what I think a lot of people should strive to do. And that's what like Jimmy and Billy have done really well, you know, making friends with people that are doing other types of business too. What percentage of people that are kind of in your coaching program or Amazon sellers that you know, view it as like a vehicle to starting a different business and building cash flow? Um, versus the amount of people that see it as like the long-term play, like I'm gonna do this forever until I retire. Yeah, that's a good question. So the reselling side of Amazon, I'll I'll be very upfront with people. They should not be doing that forever, right? It's simply a tool to win your time back, right? With online and retail arbitrage, and then you wanna move into higher leverage stuff. Whether that is hiring a bunch of virtual assistants to help you with the reselling business, or moving into a more scalable model like wholesale or private label, a little bit more consistent, a little bit more leveraged, Um, like that so yeah I mean the way I see it is like basically no one that's really serious should be doing online arbitrage for more than like a couple years you want to be moving into higher leverage opportunities whether it's like personal brand and software the way I've done it or private label which is starting your own brand on Amazon or uh, wholesale which is buying product bulk from like XYZ distribution company like that and it's different types of products but it's like essentially the same thing at the end of the day like and I just see it as a big opportunity and that if you're the type of person that can make 100K profit with online arbitrage in a year, your skill set is better translated to a bigger opportunity vehicle, essentially. I think people should understand too. And, you know, I, I find this super interesting seeing it firsthand at like a place like, you know, when we're at Ross or like when we're at uh, <laughs> TJ Maxx or something like that or any of the outlets, right? You always explain to me that like you were doing Amazon before you were doing Amazon in the sense that you were going to these outlets and you're finding products that were selling at a discount and selling them, you know, at a markup at one of these online stores. But I think people need to understand that like what what you're doing with like Amazon reselling is like not necessarily like more difficult. You're just doing the same stuff you were doing four years ago, flipping books and flipping shoes, but at like a larger scale. And I feel like people fail to understand this is like this big operation, which it sometimes is, I bet, but it's like 
from like a conceptual standpoint, like you're not really doing much different. You're just taking an item and you're like selling it for, you know, a markup. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the Maybe day- Maybe that's oversimplified like, from someone that doesn't do but, Amazon, but it's like not that much different. No, though. everything's simple though. Everything is simple. You know what I mean? Like everything that works is simple. And you know, you and I are lucky, right? We've been in the space for a little while. We kind of know that everything works, right? But the key is the people who haven't been exposed to that, they don't know right they haven't sat and did something for six months give it time to get lucky give it time to work right um so yeah i mean i don't know i'm i'm so like bullish on everything business wise like i just see everything as an opportunity um basically I, you know keep focused on my own stuff and everything but yeah at the end of the day like it's it's super super simple and like if amazon ever went away like the network the capital the relationships the skills i built would translate to a different type of reselling or another uh business and you build that confidence through daily action to be able to like you know say that and stuff i feel like would you recommend that some if somebody's like getting started in the amazon space or reselling space they should go and go in the trenches so to speak like you and billy and start flipping books and go very small skill or would you recommend they just go straight to amazon and start learning that yeah well the books was actually on amazon interestingly enough i don't well, know you were finding them in yeah the oh yeah, yeah exactly yeah, okay right. cool cool like, yeah actually yeah going to the physical location yeah that's something you'd recommend for beginners so yeah get so that, like, the hand, you know like the dirty hands kind of like in the trench experience sure so there's a couple things you know ways we can go with that but yeah if you got like less than like 500 bucks one just from a work ethic and determination point of view get your ass to the thrift store like because because like if you don't have that type of money that's exactly why you need to build that work ethic and get in the trenches because that's going to teach you a lot fast right um but then there's people who have experience in another type of business or they have a bunch of capital to where the point they've earned the right not to need to do that right right so it's basically like skill set and capital availability essentially but like I think most people that aren't where they like we joke like there's a tweet I think I wrote for Billy or something where it's like the world is yours if you're willing to like yeah. talk to the thrift store and play and get backroom access and something it's the same thing with like and in general like I'm always so big on like how Amazon sellers are deathly afraid of other Amazon sellers mm -hmm. right like if you can take a video and post it on Twitter like the world is yours like there's a guy watching this video right now he knows exactly who he is he posted this video and like I retweeted it and it got like 5,000 views and like in a week, he put himself ahead of like 99% of Amazon sellers from a networking perspective, right? And then now people are coming to him to talk about this stuff, right? Right. It's like a dream come true when you're new because this shit's super, super lonely when you start out on your own. But luckily, most people aren't trying quite lily at all in anything, but especially in terms of like trying to like meet and grow with other sellers. And like, it's hard for me to even conceptualize it being hard to sell on Amazon because from day one, Danny, Garrett, and I were all talking every day, so we, I was avoiding mistakes. We were learning stuff a lot quicker. There's a lot faster coming feedback loop, essentially, and like that was so huge. And you see it time and time again with like these kids on Twitter that get on and just start talking like crazy. Like they just have it so much easier because they're positioning themselves to find opportunity, so that opportunity can come to them. And it's so smart. Yeah, I think the network thing is so huge, especially if you're younger. Like at least for me, speaking from experience, like the amount of opportunities that I've had access to just because I'm openly kind of sharing like the whole building in public thing what I'm going through yep and I don't even think I really did many like Twitter growth hacks or I was never really like trying to gain followers but you it just happened naturally like I and existed no one, for a long period of time no one else exists right no one else exists no one else actually tries it's kind of that way with anything but like yeah for sure dude like I don't know a single person who was active on social media two years ago that's that was talking about amazon stuff that isn't making like that actually gives a shit and tries that isn't making like 10k a month profit like it just basically doesn't exist because you've done it long enough to get lucky you've done it long enough to have someone slide in your DMs. yo check take a look at this and then that ends up being a good opportunity to take advantage of for a while or people you get on zoom with and everything and uh and all that so like yeah i could talk about that stuff all day luckily from an opportunistic perspective, no one actually does anything. Right. So like we, me and my crew keep kind of gobbling up market share and everything, but like the people that do, they win and I love it. Yeah, one of the things I was like looking through one of Fazio's podcasts the other day and you know, people, like he says, like the kind of expectation is that, you know, 10 people send cold emails to um, 10 people and like every single person gets like one client out of that. But that's not actually how mm, the probability curve. Yeah, 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 okay. It's that the people with all the results get all the clients. So instead, it's usually like one or two people that are taking all those 10 clients. It's like one person that takes all 10 clients, or it's like one person takes seven and the other person takes three, and the other eight are left with zilch, like nothing. 
Yeah, because there's a lot of like specific shit you pick up on over time. Like you'll only get from like texting someone for like three months right. to where they're comfortable to share with you. And it's like really hard to see that as a beginner and everything. But yeah, like 10% of like Amazon sellers get 90% of the results. 10% of products in your store will make 80% of the profit. It's all types of, you know, probability distributed like that. And most people don't do enough volume to figure that out in the first place. Even with content too, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. It's like most of your content is probably new average, maybe not even great. And you just have a few pieces that really perform for you. And that's where the majority of your traffic or sales comes from. And that I love, that's why I love stuff. Cause I know I'll just endure. I know I'll be around long enough yeah, to get lucky with one. that stuff consistently. Yeah. yeah. Like with anything, bro. Like, like just, I know I'll just stick around and be in the game long enough that like no one's going to out frequency. No one's going to out exist me, et cetera. And that's why, you know, good things will continue to happen. All right. Hope so. Yeah, and it's funny, I think like with the internet, it's basically like open the floodgates and anyone can access anything. So I think now more than ever, it's a network gap, not an information gap. Ooh, that that's know. fire, bro. Uh, you know I'm gonna I mean? say that like crazy. That you is so, that. so true. Gap, yeah, right? that is so, because you look so at, true. you look at people like maybe myself or anyone else, it's like, we even, we had this conversation with Jacob last night at the Cigar Lounge, me, Cam, and him, and you know, he's obviously an up and coming videographer. He's really good at what he does. And Cam said to him, the only difference between, you know, you and making 10K a month is just communication and networking, right? Networking and not in the traditional sense. But yeah, like fuck the, the right traditional people. sense. And I'm when I say network, about, I just yeah. mean like the overall term, not like specifically going to events. Yeah, no, no. But it is really true because it's not like he needs to learn anything about videography to start, you know, like, it's not like he's like, oh, it's this little trick and all of a sudden he's going to start making like a shit ton of money. It's the fact that he hasn't spent the years of building relationships or the months of building relationships with specific people to have access to those opportunities. And I think it's so interesting because it's like the person who's making the most money with an agency or the person that's making the most money with X, Y, Z, you know, a lot of people said this before that I me, mean, it's not an original idea, but the fact is like, they're not actually a lot of, in a lot of cases, they're not actually the single best person. They're not number one on the leaderboard in terms of getting results or knowledge or skill sets is that they have positioned themselves in such a way over a long period of time where they have ends with certain people and they're able to basically quote unquote get their foot in the door it's dude it's just like it's kind of like the corporate world but in a less like cringe way it's like and, yeah and it's based on like all their factors and like what's on your resume right you think about like you know like the whole thing with like, you know, getting a corporate finance job or working in investment banking, right? It's like the people landing the jobs and the kids that are like landing these jobs at the boutique banks or whatever, like they're coming from the target schools. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean these kids that are coming from like Harvard or Stanford or whatever are like necessarily on paper better fits to be, you know, investment banking or working at that company than this guy who came from like a semi-target school that's maybe not as good. But the perception is that that person is more is better equipped because they're coming from the they have that like social proof of the school right and the whole joke is like once you get out of like the the first few years of being an analyst or whatever the school no longer matters because all people care about is your skill set but the school is what allows you to get your foot in the door and so the funny part is it's like those kids are not necessarily better equipped or you know like more qualified to be in that position but they just has like this network gap that's the only difference. It's not like they learn anything different about finance in school necessarily. And so I think people need to wrap their heads around that and stop being stubborn about communicating or like coping and say, Oh, you know, he got lucky. He got lucky with this. He knew this person. It's like, that's the whole well, game. And yeah, that's like the whole game. you, you should be trying to get you know lucky. I mean? Yeah. You got to raise that. And not in the sense of like being transactional or taking advantage of people, but just necessarily like just putting yourself in a position to succeed where you're constantly communicating and making friends in something. Oh, hey, I know a guy that needs you for this or whatever, right? And just being a person that, you know, puts other people on and the law of re reciprocity is that like, you know, people kind of naturally feel entitled to do the same. Yeah, and you see it on Twitter with like dudes who are funny in their replies and everything. Like they, like they just get that slowly but surely. And I was that guy, bro, swiping up on people's yeah. stories like crazy on Instagram four years ago. And like I was like documenting everything. Like people can go back and look at 2019. You can see me four and a half years ago talking on camera for the first time. I look like a complete robot, but that was what started the process of figuring stuff out, you know, being a little bit more confident on camera these days and everything. And like back to kind of more tactical Amazon stuff, right? It's completely a network gap, not an information gap because anyone can read a keep a chart. Anyone can read data on Selleramp, but not everyone gets access to getting FaceTimed by 
their friend XYZ product just restocked that they call you before they even check out because they know you guys work on this stuff together and it's a positive sum game. Right, but everyone has the opportunity to build that positioning for themselves, but they won't because they are deathly afraid of if their high school friends find their Amazon Instagram page. I and that's this, why they get ran over. I saw this funny meme on your page a couple days ago, but like when your friend sends you a lead or something oh, like that. Oh, the, the Leonardo DiCaprio. Can you explain that yeah. to me? Like sending leads and like kind of, is that sure. related to the network thing? Yeah, man. Because like it's one. Okay, say you're the average Amazon seller, right? You work for two hours a day. You sit on the computer by yourself. You have to identify. You had to learn everything on your own. You had to. You watched a bunch of YouTube videos. You had, but because you're not talking to anyone else, you have to make all the mistakes on your own. You have to find all the opportunities on your own. You have to wait three weeks to get feedback on whether something was a good purchase, right? Because you whatever and uh, everything. Meanwhile, like the people who are working together, right? They are trading opportunity. They're saying, yo, did you look at this, right? Group chats, discords, forums, Twitter, etc." And now they get to avoid a lot of mistakes because they can ask their friend and get that feedback a lot quicker, right? So they're saving time, they're saving money. And I always tell people, like people are like, I don't have time to like, you know, exist on social media, talk about Amazon. So you don't have time not to. Cause if you don't do it, you doom yourself to perpetually having to work a lot more make less and overall have like less fun than the people that do it and everything and like it's just hard to you kind of see it and all that but like i just i'm such a big proponent of it because it's made it so much more fun and easy for me having the boys to like rip stuff with and everything so like yeah um the sending the lead part's a little bit transactional everything but it's like yo the lululemon backpack just restocked amazing go make a hundred bucks right and then they do it back and it's the kind of thing you kind of get once you really know someone and everything but like the easiest way is like just talking to other people like applying to stuff on Twitter. Like one of my, uh, one of my guys, he tweeted the other day, like I'm getting addicted to Amazon FBA. And it was a picture of like his room. And there was, there was the mattress on the floor. There were a bunch of boxes around it. There was a dog and there was a bench press. And like, I think it was like 17,000 people or something saw it when his account is like 200 followers or whatever. And it's fucking hilarious. And like, there was a ton of banter in the replies. And like, it took him 13 seconds to take that picture. It cost him $0 and 17,000 people scroll past it that are interested in making money. It's like, there's no way that compounded over the long term doesn't provide opportunity for you. Yeah, and, and I think also another thing people need to realize like about making content, even in the Amazon community too, you don't have to do this like spectacular, no, don't super make. polished thing yeah. to get attention, right? I Even like recently, I've kind of been more like off the hip, like I'll just post random like story posts of us like documenting what we're doing or like messing around at client shoots, right? I just posted like three handsome videos of you on my Sorry. Instagram story. And the point with that is like, just being likable, I think is such an important trait that people overlook. I think everyone wants to look polished and there's nothing wrong with that occasionally. But I think on the opposite spectrum, if you show people behind the scenes stuff and you're transparent, people appreciate that a lot. Because I think when people try to go like too much of the guru route where every single video is like hyper professional or whatever, then there's nothing wrong with that. But when people take it to the extreme of like curating it way too much and trying to like almost appear as like a god or a superhero, I think you lose a lot of people and I think you just become one of those like Rolex cigar types on Instagram that is all lifestyle. And I mean, you can actually post the pictures of you in the trenches like working on stuff in like a non kind of cringy way of just like you like just pulling out your phone to get a picture of something you're working on. People appreciate that and it goes a long way for something that takes you like less than a minute to do yeah like the world is completely starred for authenticity and like a lot of people that are watching this right now are you know trying to like get their amazon thing going and everything like just scroll back to 2019 and look at what i was doing look at what other people are doing that are just showing hey this worked great this didn't there's this really really funny video of billy we were watching it yesterday on stream where it's of him like a year ago he's like i drove four hours to pennsylvania for a book sale and found nothing. <laughs> and I got a speed speeding ticket on the way home. But that's what the dream is about. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like if you have the balls to like post that, like, I mean, you can do anything considering in the modern world, like how cushy, like, and how people are like scared of like talking on video and everything. Like you don't have to, you'll just make less money and have to work harder to find the opportunity than the people that are working together. The 19 year olds that are making double the money than you because they're working with their friends on discord and stuff. And it's just true basically and all that. But either way, like what's cool is yeah, it's completely like a, a network thing. Cause you're just going to like find more opportunity basically like, with Amazon, especially like how some stuff works with like products restocking and stuff. It's all about like what 
what alpha you have access to and it's a hell of a lot more cost effective and such to just become friends and trade with other people and then you can make more over time and it like compounds and it's like completely like exponential thing. Something I was talking to Jimmy about a while ago, he was talking about like, you know, I asked him like, what's the best way for someone to like start networking on Amazon? And he made the point of saying, when you're starting out, you don't want to target the guys with like 50,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Instead, you go for somebody that maybe is one or two steps ahead of you or on a similar level in terms of followers or experience or whatever with Amazon and you just make friends with them. Yeah. And then you kind of slowly work your way up and you're able to communicate with different people as you learn more, as you grow your own brand. And that's the way to do it rather than trying to like leash off of like big accounts when you start slowly build, start to build your brand and reach out to people who are on a similar, maybe a little bit ahead of you rather than like going for like the people that are like a hundred K followers who probably aren't going to give you the time of day. Cause you only have like 50 followers. Yeah. You just slowly build it up over time. And I, I like actually never really talk about like the personal branding. It's like, I look way better at that than I am at Amazon stuff. I like, like Amazon. It's like what is built around and everything. But yeah, like you can see the early stages of everyone, like building it up. You can go back early B flips, early, uh, Wi-Fi astronaut, etc., and see like I this worked terribly today. This worked great today. This is a book I found that sold for eighty-six bucks. And like I'll get people who I have never talked to this week. I'll meet them and they'll be like, "Yeah, I've been following you for like two years." Like I can't imagine that over years and years and years, basically. And it's also cool to be able to go look back on and like it's like fucking crazy how far it's come considering like I just started it like as a thing that everyone was telling me wasn't going to work and everything but um you know luckily it's like you keep going with stuff and it's just over time you you figured out like I had no idea we'd have seller amp I had no idea we'd have a discord with 50,000 members like that's free anyone watching can go join no idea I'd be coming up on 30,000 subscribers or whatever and you just keep growing it over time and like the way my income's grown it was like the first like three years of me doing like full stream my stuff is like pretty stagnant, right? And then it like shot out basically for two years and it's like that made all the prior time building it yeah. working because that's when you're like learning the stuff that you then kind of, you know, test and apply and then like you find a big opportunity to squeeze the shit out of it basically. It's like Q4 every year on Amazon. It's so, so easy to make money and the people who do the best are the people that were consistently like learning, applying, working together because like the pitches are way fatter. In, in December and if you have the feedback loop right you got the alpha right you can make a, a bunch of money you just need like the confidence capital to take advantage of it basis like that's going to be a complete movie too like Q4 on Amazon's crazy like like toys and stuff popping off and everything that's a really interesting comment you made there and I've heard that so frequently of people in all industries the idea of like you make the majority of profits are made in a very condensed or small window of time People think it's like this linear thing, but in reality, yeah, not at all. you're going to yeah. squeeze small windows of opportunity and that's where the opportunity happens. Think of like, you know, a software liquidation event where someone sells their company or, you know, a hedge fund manager where he finds like a really small window of time during a bull market where he's able to capitalize and make the majority of his money and the rest of the year is preserving capital. But he's able to make most of his profit during that like, you know, eight month period or wherever the bull market is raging, that's where he cashes out, right? Or, you know, one of our trade clients, Umar, he has this really good clip that I like where he says like, you know, people say like, oh, like you made hundred K in like 10 minutes. And he's like, no, it actually took 10 years because people fail to consider the amount of time that I had spent learning trading. So it's like, no, that hundred thousand actually took 10 years because it took the 10 years of learning and failing and experience to get there. Now people think it's 10 minutes, but really you have to look back at the time it took to learn. And luckily people won't do that on their own. So that's why the big returns are after a couple of years of doing whatever, because you start to learn, you know, and, and get access to like really specific stuff you just don't get when you're normal, because there's no reason for you to get it, right? You haven't given any value to the marketplace. You haven't had people, you haven't answered thousands of DMs and stuff, but you get that by like, you know, posting stuff and, uh, for I could see myself in the future, like talking more about like personal branding and everything too, because I think it's like a lot of fun and everything. It's like pretty cool because like everyone can do it right and uh, all that. But I really, really like that. But like that's how I get started. It was like Gary Vee just telling me to do that. She was like, all right, like, <laughs> like a lot of plus for miles. Let's do it basically. What do you think about people that get involved with like drama on Twitter needlessly? Like, you know, people that are like focused on like, oh, so and so is like not selling legit product or this or that. Like, obviously, I know you tell the Amazon boys and you tell people in your coaching program, like, put yourself out there on social media. But how do you like, what do you what is your perspective on kind of getting involved and in like d distinguishing the difference between like talking shit and friendly banter versus like actually getting in full full blown fights with people on Twitter? Yeah. And just like starting beef for no reason. I don't wanna know. I don't know, I'll mute, whatever. Like I've never seen anyone doing better than me hating on me. Like 
period. Like, I don't want to know about it. I'll get, I'll mute. And like, this isn't even people coming at me. Like, you know, people come at me here and now again, that's fine. None of them ever are going to get what I'm going to get. And that's fine. Like, that's because they're focused on themselves. They're focused on me rather than themselves, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't want to know. I just mute it. Like, it's the same thing with like political and stuff. Like, it takes away from the mission if you're worried about it. You know what I mean? When, like, no one's going to care in like five years, but the stuff you will care about is like, you know, building the business and doing what you should be doing and everything. So yeah, I got no fucking idea. I don't care. Mute. Mute all the political words. All that. The irony is so many people in our space are reluctant to consume that information. They don't have TVs. They don't watch the news. And neither do I. I'm very, like, tapped out when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't really care. But at the same time, while they say that, they'll also participate in drama on Twitter. Well, it's very true. I, and once again, I could care less because then now if we're talking about now we're the, you know. We're yeah, now it's like yeah, we're, by exactly. acknowledging it, we're almost like Yeah, but we're, well. I'm sure I'm a hypocrite. But we're looking at that. it from like a critical kind of way, Yeah, right? I got no but idea. I think yeah. it's funny too, but I think it's important. Like the self-awareness is important too. Like practice what you preach first of all. And more importantly, like don't become the thing you kind of swore to destroy in a way, right? It's like if you are reluctant to drama or the, all this stuff and it's like you preach the importance of existing independently outside of like what's going on in the world and focusing on like what you can do on a day to day is like you also have to be aware of like when you're getting swept up in drama that doesn't really pertain to you. Yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't imagine replying to someone that was like mad about something, yeah, or, you exactly, know, or bro. being mad on like your life is the killing with kindness thing is so real. Yeah. Too. Oh, big time, bro. Yeah. I there's I can't remember what the quote was, but it's like I don't know. At the end of the day, like, this is true, though. And this is not my quote, obviously. Like, people do business with people they like, right? And um, a lot of people, like, try to, like, alienate themselves from other people. And that just makes no sense to me, too. I want everyone knowing who I am, liking me. I want to meet as many people as possible. I want to answer every question people got. Like, I, at the end of the day, like, I've gotten fucking everything in my life from interacting with people online, right? Mm -hmm. Getting to know people online. So, like, the more of that I can do based on past history if we can get more of that in the future like it'll keep providing opportunity and, and bigger hopefully bigger games to play bigger opportunities to go after and so forth so like i'm just getting started with all that stuff this yeah those girl scout cookies hitting right there yeah yeah no 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 not on the pot not on the pot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very he true. Stop this, like all, all these like five cookies in his mouth at once. Yeah, we gotta scan that happened. with Celeramp too and see what the. Uh, I'm actually pretty sure they do move. I mean, on girls guys are ruthless, bro. They yeah. mark up their stuff like crazy. There's yeah, no actually, yeah, yeah. yeah grab, grab my phone and let's get a live scan on these uh, with uh, with Celeramp right here. All right, let's get a see. picture. Of yeah, this get, get the barcode there, right? Yeah. Okay. Like Other, it, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> Right, let's get this out of airplane mode. Bro, right yeah, now. they're bro, they're ruthless. Like they're like actually like all right, like got, sharks. The, yes, the sir. Girl Scouts. We got the cell ramp right here. Okay, let's get the scan going. Okay, let's see what it's going for. My connection's not great here. Ooh, damn, it is taking a sec. Oh, okay. Damn, they move pretty well. Yeah, for any of my Amazon people watching, mm. yeah, forty thousand sales rank. Um, damn, two boxes. So the the Scout s'more sandwich kind. It's a forty k rank. Um, those like the it's twenty bucks. Ones. How much is a box for these? Dude, I don't know. I think my it can't be much though. This yeah, oh. <laughs> probably like I don't know. I don't know the retail price. Because if they're price. like four bucks a piece, then it would be profitable. It would probably these are. Pro I'm, if I had to guess, I'd probably say there's like twelve dollars. I figured yes, they're not profitable. Yeah, interesting take right there though with the retail arbitrage. We're about to go to this uh, TJ Maxx and scan some retail arbitrage box as well. I think we can end off on, I, I love your, how you were like asking me out like Amex and like all the jokes with that on yeah, Twitter yeah, and everything. Yeah. Cause like Presley, you like follow a lot of Amazon Twitter. Yeah, people, I mean, Jimmy, right? I'm friends with Billy, exactly. you obviously. Yeah, 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 right. So you see a lot of the banter without having like a really intricate view of, so I remember you asking me like one time, you guys like really like buy a lot of like product and you just like have to sell it's like, yes, that's exactly <laughs> how it is, right? I mean, obviously a lot of people like shouldn't do that. I just like didn't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's just like a risk I was willing to take, right? I, I don't think anything's less risky than not going after you what you want in life and the current vehicle happened to be that. Luckily, I don't have to do that anymore. I've earned the right to not have to do it anymore, but yeah, it's like, sometimes we were deep in the trenches back in the day but like at the end of the day like you like worst comes to worst like the product has value you can sell it on a different marketplace and, and everything like and you can super easily break even on stuff if you're buying stuff that's liquid enough you could just drop the price if you ever had to i could talk about that stuff all day like people's perception of risk is just destroyed these days bro how they'll like like 
work for 40 years, never go after what they want. That's like the ultimate risk is to do that. Like if you go yeah, after like something, zero percent chance of it work. Yeah, like, dude, it's crazy, man. And like the with the internet and shit, you can start stuff on the side for free, dude, completely. Like I, a lot of the inventory I got when I started selling on Amazon was like free or like one dollar a piece, basically with the books and stuff. So I learned the process really cheap, and then eventually. I'm, moved in once I built comp and started doing, you know, online arbitrage and be able to do that and stuff. But yeah, like completely, like you guys got to go after what you want, seriously, because no one else is going to do it for you either. And it's the best time in history ever to build wealth with the least time, the least capital required. You can do it at scale easy. And like, it's a beautiful thing to be able to squeeze this bag with you. Definitely, bro. Yes, sir. Absolute pleasure. We're going to wrap up. Head to TG Max now. Cool. All right. Let's get after it on TG Max. One. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys watching the entire podcast. If you guys got any questions, please let me know down below. I answer all my comments and I really appreciate it.